What's up everyone, Alex here. The 16-bit era of JRPGs was a truly special time for me. While many will mention Chrono Trigger as the poster child of that time, it's all about one game for me, and that's Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy VI upped the ante when it came to the storytelling of that era, weaving stories that dealt with subjects such as death, depression, and suicide with a set of evolved gameplay systems that built upon the innovations of its predecessors. Differences and favorites aside, what you might not know is that we all share this love of 16-bit JRPGs with a man named Tomoya Asano. Even if you've never heard of him before, there's a very good chance that you've probably played one of his games. Bravely Default, Triangle Strategy, and of course, Octopath Traveler. While the games themselves couldn't be more different, there's one common through line that connects them all, Asano's unwavering passion for wanting to bring back the joy and wonder we felt when playing 16-bit JRPGs. This is all to say that much like Final Fantasy VI, Octopath Traveler 2 benefits much from the creation of all the aforementioned games. It's because of this that Octopath Traveler 2 feels like a long-lost 16-bit JRPG that was just unearthed years later, except it's also built with the sensibilities of the modern turn-based JRPG fan. Released on February 24th, 2023, Octopath Traveler 2 is a standalone turn-based JRPG anthology, co-developed by Team Asano and Acquire, and published by Square Enix, who sponsored this video. The footage that you're seeing right now is from the PS5 version of the game, and the game is also available on PS4, Switch, and PC. Its core design harkens back to the good old days of the Saga series, when players were asked to choose from one of several different characters to start with, then pick up the rest of the cast along the way, as their chosen paths briefly converge with one another. If Octopath Traveler 2 is going to be your first time experiencing the series, which it will be for PS4 and PS5 players, have no fear. You won't be missing anything by playing this game right away, as both games are completely unrelated. And doing so will treat you with an original story, a widely diverse cast, along with a ton of quality of life features and adjustments that people ask for that weren't present in the original game. And I think that's a very good thing, because as you'll soon find out, the experience of playing Octopath Traveler 2 is truly more than just a sum of its parts. The original Octopath Traveler popularized the HD 2D art style that's given sprite-based games quite the glow-up, and Octopath Traveler 2 ups the ante by not only improving the rendering quality and speed of its display, but also increasing the amount of detail found in both its sprites and its environments. I can go on and on about the little nuances of how it looks, but I think it's best to just see the difference for yourself and compare both games running on the same platform. Improved visual fidelity, better performance, and clearer picture aside, Octopath Traveler 2 also features a day and night cycle that you can quickly toggle with the press of a button. Not only that, the game's environments also feature moving shadow patterns that blanket its many outdoor environments, which greatly enhance the feeling of depth in each area. The resulting picture looks incredibly amazing, and almost lifelike despite its chosen rendering style, enhancing the majesty and breathtaking beauty of its locations, while adding to the satisfaction of discovering new towns and locales, of which there are plenty. An aspect of Octopath Traveler 2 that I truly love are the variety of biomes featured and how distinct the two continents of Cilicia are. Starting the game in the east, you'll find yourself exploring bustling urban landscapes and a few small towns, where a booming industrial revolution has both society and culture disrupting at a rapid pace. This contrasts with the more varied biomes and locales in the west, where big dreams, tradition, and honor are still upheld despite the slow encroaching influence from the east. 
And just by describing everything in this manner, you get a sense that Team Asano took great care and attention to impart an ongoing story onto the world itself, and not just the individual stories that feature our eight heroes. And couple this with a brand new day and night cycle that has people moving from one location to another, and you truly get a sense that the world of Celestia is a living, breathing world, making your potential adventures feel all the more exciting. But alas, Octopath Traveler 2 isn't just a pretty game with a well thought out world. And with many unseen enemies skulking about in the shadows, you'll eventually find yourself in harm's way. At the heart of Octopath Traveler 2's combat is a break slash boost system. Every enemy you encounter in the game will have a shield that you'll need to break in order to make them susceptible to more damage and prevent them from taking their turns you'll whittle down this armor by finding weaknesses. When you face enemies for the first time, you'll see a bunch of empty blocks representing how many weaknesses they have, and it's up to you to figure out what those are. Since enemy weaknesses are displayed in a very specific order despite facing different enemies, trying to find these weaknesses is kind of like a metagame in and of itself, not so dissimilar to a game of Wordle, where you're trying to figure out what letters fit in each box to find a word. Only in Octopath Traveler 2, finding one of those weaknesses is typically good enough. The boost point system complements this feature by allowing you to spend these points for additional physical attacks or enhance the damage of your magical attacks and skills, to name a few. The combination of break and BP is as satisfying as it ever was in the first game. Finding weaknesses is still super fun and especially satisfying when you break enemies and hear that shatter sound effect. And it's also fun to just figure out how to spend your BP, whether you want to use most of it to break enemies or to unleash more damage once they're broken. I also want to point out that my enjoyment of the battle system also has something to do with how much faster it is by default. When I played a little bit of the first Octopath Traveler to prepare for this review, I'd completely forgotten how the transitions and the combat animations just took a bit too long, as though it was like being loaded at every given opportunity. But with Octopath Traveler 2, things trigger at a faster pace. And if that's not good enough, there's even a speed toggle for those speed demons who want these battles to go by in a flash. But perhaps one of the best things about Octopath Traveler 2 is its smoother leveling curve, which is adjusted a ton better when compared to the first game. Not once during my playthrough did I ever feel the need to really grind for both experience or job points. Part of the reason why is because of how the level requirements are much more diverse for each chapter, with some chapter 2s even starting in the single digits. Merely following the chapters in order will quickly get you caught up in levels, though straying from the beaten path may lead you to optional caves and dungeons that contain valuable treasure. And if that's not enough, changing the time of day to night will make tougher enemies spawn, which will give you a ton more experience. Because of these day and night cycle changes, you'll also have fantastic new passive skills that make these night raids a breeze. Having Temenos and Throne in your party during evenings, for instance, really helps even the playing field by blinding and casting debuffs on your enemies, as well as buffing the entire party, making them essential each time you want to go out at night to cause some havoc. Not only that, each character now has a brand new ability called Latent Power that you can activate, kind of like a super move. My personal favorite has to be Particios, which instantly maxes out his BP meter, increasing your potential to break shields or just deal massive damage. What's so great about Latent Power is how it synergizes with each character's primary and assigned secondary jobs, whose adjustments and changes from the first game just make every party composition a lot more viable. And unlike said game, you can now find guilds that'll have missions that'll grant you licenses that lets up to three party members access the same job. No more juggling one secondary job across the cast of eight. Needless to say, Team Asano recognized its combat and progression systems as one of the series' best assets, and thanks to the smart rebalancing efforts and the new and exciting features that ripple across the entire game, Octopath Traveler 2's combat is even more fun than it was the first time around. 
I can go on and on about how both the combat and progression systems changed and fill an entire video with these changes. But if there's one thing that I'd like you to take away is that you're gonna be feasting with the amount of options and possibilities you'll have when dealing with its combat and progression systems. But the depth of gameplay doesn't stop there, as Octopath Traveler 2 now has two path actions per character, which changes depending on the time of day. While I won't go into extreme detail as to what each individual path action does, what I do want to say is that the path actions add a level of granularity to the world that makes the NPCs more important than they usually are. Every time I arrive at a new town, I just have to do my rounds and try to grab every single item, discover hidden treasures, and get perks by inquiring and questioning the townsfolk. To put it in another way, it's a kind of exploration that's vastly different from your typical traveling around the world, gaining experience, and advancing the story, which might sound like a chore at first. But thanks to the narratives that each person has, these activities give a lot more meaning to the surrounding environments and your journey through the game. While there was never any doubt that Octopath Traveler 2 was going to feature great gameplay and fantastic visual upgrades, I do have to point out a few things that weren't quite addressed. More specifically, each character chapter still silos the rest of the party to an unknown location, opting to feature the character front and center. And while travel banter does become available to help bring a party member or two to discuss current events, there have been a few times that the tone and the subject matter being brought up felt out of place. There was one particular chapter where Cassie found herself in the middle of a dire situation, treating soldiers wounded due to a fierce fight, only to activate a new travel banter shortly afterwards where Agnia gleefully talks about dancing. Read the room, girl. I also found that while Autotext advancement helped tremendously to immerse us in moments featuring voice dialogue, these dialogue boxes disappear a bit too fast during moments devoid of said voice acting. That said, being able to set an auto text delay to keep non-voiced on-screen text for a duration should solve this issue, and something that could potentially be patched in the future. Despite the party scurrying off to do whatever it is they do while their fellow traveler indulges in their stories, what cancels this complaint out for me is the vastly improved storytelling in Octopath Traveler 2. I alluded earlier that the game benefits from all of the games that came before it, and to me, I can see how penning the grounded narrative of Triangle Strategy greatly enhanced its storytelling chops. There is a smorgasbord of different themes, moods, and narrative styles that really showcase why Octopath Traveler 2 needed to be an anthology. Of course, these stories wouldn't work without a compelling cast, and Octopath Traveler 2's party really gave me the best first impression I've had in a long while. My personal favorite is, of course, Particio the Merchant, who hails from the town of Orsrush on the western continent. And as you can imagine just from his hometown's name alone, it's a place filled with pioneers and explorers wanting to strike it rich with the ongoing silver rush. Couple his lovely southern twang with an entrepreneurial spirit that'll inspire people everywhere he goes, and you can see why he's my favorite. Also, that killer saxophone solo. Then you have Casti the Apothecary, who you'd think would wield a staff based off of her caring nature. But nah, -uh, she wields a friggin' axe. She's ready and willing to amputate at any time, people. And then you have Temenos and Crick, your Sherlock Holmes and Watson, if you will, as well as Oswald the Scholar, who seems to be doing his best impression of the TV show Prison Break, with two dedicated chapters for this alone. This is just a small sampling of what the rest of the cast is like, and I love every single one of them. Apart from the quality of the writing, Triangle Strategy also influenced Octopath Traveler 2 in one other key area, choices. While Triangle Strategy was all about making decisions that you'll have to weigh literally to progress the game towards a specific ending, 
Octopath Traveler 2, on the other hand, reinforces the quote-unquote traveler part of its name by allowing you to choose from multiple story points scattered across Olystia. By giving players a wider and more diverse palette to experience the game's story, Octopath Traveler 2 gives off an air of unprecedented freedom rarely found in story-heavy JRPGs. Should you go and explore that cave you just discovered close to a new chapter? Or do you want to fast travel around a world and continue another story? The choice is truly yours to make. While I did criticize travel banter earlier, I do think that for the most part, it serves to involve the other party members pretty well when it functions appropriately. But what really makes the party feel like they're bonding together is yet another new feature in Octopath Traveler 2. Cross Paths pairs up two of your party members in a side story that spans multiple parts. You'll unlock these new parts by advancing through each character's chapter as expected, but the interactions that happen during these scenes are of far more importance than the trivial travel banter you'll encounter. In fact, Cross Path stories are much more in-depth and pair up individuals who don't normally have a lot in common. Seeing how these pairs of characters butt heads or work together surprisingly do a lot to create a feeling of cohesiveness across the party of eight. And unlike travel banter, cross paths are fully voiced as well. In fact, there's a ton of voice acting that can be found in Octopath Traveler 2. I've mentioned in a previous video how the southern twang of some of the game's characters can often be so exaggerated that it's made me chuckle a few times but I'm chalking that up to the fact that Celestia isn't our world and that their culture might be different. After all, who's to say that their southern twang isn't supposed to sound like that? <laughs> Jokes aside, what's great about the game's voice acting is that the voice director knew that the actors would have to do some serious heavy lifting because of a lack of detailed facial expressions from the characters themselves. And by the way, this isn't a knock on the quality of the sprites, I love them but rather shows how using resources smartly can lift up something that can be seen by others as a deficiency. It's not enough to just hire talented voice actors and have them spew a few voice lines here and there. It has to mean and do something significant. This all leads me to talk about the game's soundtrack, which is just an absolute treat for my ears. Yasunori Nishiki returns to compose another plethora of songs that spark a wide variety of feelings and emotions and I feel that Octopath Traveler 2's tracks represent a maturation in his musical style. There's a bravery that exists in every song in the game that communicates a feeling of confidence, with every intention to rouse the player into playing and experiencing more of the game to such a degree that it's practically difficult to even think to stop playing. Once again, Nishiki manages to create a soundtrack that I feel is a must-have, and that's appropriate given the game's massive six-disc soundtrack incidentally came out very recently. To say that Octopath Traveler 2 far exceeded my expectations feels like an understatement to me. While some will choose to break down the game to its individual parts, what cannot be denied is how these small things add up to what is essentially an extremely polished and high-quality RPG. Every moment spent in the world of Celestia will have you engaging with it in multiple ways, may it be through its rebalanced combat and progression systems, or its more engaging stories and presentation. I normally don't find myself using superlatives and flowery words to describe my experience in games, but Octopath Traveler 2 fires on all cylinders and has instantly become one of my favorite games in recent memory. And if you're still not convinced, you can always try it out for yourself by playing through the generous 3-hour demo of Octopath Traveler 2, which is available now on every platform the game is on. And maybe just maybe you'll even be like me and play through that same demo twice so that you can just carry over your save to the full game itself because as you'll soon realize it's just that damn good